Look, I, I mean, we're delighted, I have to say. Um, I mean, in a way, it's day six of the festival because the day before our official opening, the Stop the Gap uh, exhibition opened at the Sam State Museum and we'd commissioned Warwick Thornton to create his first uh, installation work, um, which I think is stunning. Actually, it's, um, and it's part of a, a much bigger show of Indigenous and First Nation artists who work in, in moving image work in the gallery context. Um, so, you know, that was great to kind of kick off the moving image program um, with that show. The next night we had Mrs. Kerry's concert open um, the festival, and I, you know, I think it really was a, a great opening night. Um, it's just such a really delightful film that pretty much anybody can relate to. Um, everyone's been a teenager, everyone knows what it's like to kind of struggle through those kind of hormone infested years and and you know it's just so wonderful to see the kind of the, the, the teaching um, and the nurturing of, of musical talent in the context of that film. So, so that was really exciting and we, we also presented Judy Davis, um, the board presented her with the Don Dunstan Award and I think she was really delighted by the evening. We managed to surprise her um, Woody, a tribute from Woody Allen, uh, which was a kind of two minute clip, and she was genuinely surprised. And Fred Skepsi gave a really fantastic testimonial, and Judy had said backstage, Oh, I'm not really going to say much. And she got out on stage and had a huge rave, and it was very well received. And, um, and then, uh, yeah, the film went down really well. And, and, you know, for people who don't know, you know, it follows this one, a number of students, but this one girl who was a real kind of prodigy, Emily's son. And, we had again surprised the audience at the end where she came out live and, and performed a kind of quite mm. quite um, brilliant solo with the local school school orchestra. Um, so that that was really um, really a great kind of thrill for everybody. And um, okay, what happened next? Oh, we had Snowtown premiere on Friday night, and this has obviously really dominated um, the coverage of the festival in terms of the newest running films. It's kind of the most sensational. Mm. title that we've, we've got in a lot of ways and, and we were very happy with the reception um, that the film got. It's a very fine film. I think people were very relieved to see that it wasn't exploitative and um, it, it, it didn't sensationalise the, the material at all. It's a very complex kind of psychological exploration of, of you know, the kind of context of the crimes following one kind of central character. and. Um, you know, I think I think the kind of subtlety, I suppose, of the film it, it shied away from from showing large amounts of violence. Um, obviously, a little bit was shown, but, but people who know the the other like film festival would know that the fact that it's been supported by the festival somehow means that the film is not going to be an exploitative uh, horror film or something like that. It means that you know there's some artistic merit going into it. Well, absolutely, and we certainly would have only funded the film on the basis of the fact that the script was very, very strong, the team, the creative team behind it were very, very strong. I think it really helped that Justin Cazell, the director, is from Adelaide and kind of grew up in the northern suburbs, not a bit further out, um, but you know, knew, knows the area, knows the feel of, of, of the suburbs, and um, you know, that was all very important to us. So, so that was great, and I think it's been received very well. The next night we have the premiere of Here I Am, um, Beck Cole's debut feature, uh, which had been filmed in Port Adelaide, and just was received so fantastically. And in fact, we had it second screening last night, and again, the audience just loved it. So that's wonderful. I mean, I think she's so talented, and, and it's just great that you know, it's, it's got that kind of very, very warm reception. Last night we, we did the premiere of Hale, Neil Court Wilson's sort of debut feature. It's a very kind of um, very very confronting film, and um, you know I think I think Emile is is a you know quite quite extraordinary filmmaker. And I think the kind of intimacy that he's able to achieve with his characters is is um, quite unique, and the um, creative process that he brought to that film again is quite unique. The way that it sort of sits very much between documentary and drama. Um, I, I think it is. I think it is a very disturbing film, um, and a lot of people were quite upset by it. Um, but I think it's also, a, you know, a very fine achievement in terms of, you know, what what he was able to explore on the screen. And um, you know, again, we're very proud to support. But that's, it. So, a, that's a risk you take when you support the project that you believe in, because you never know what the outcome is going to be. Oh, absolutely, and you know, and that's part of it. And I think, again, I, I, I think. I think the film is very successful in many ways, and um, you know, I, I think he's quite an extraordinary film. And one thing that people that came out of the hive yesterday were telling me is that, and it's something I believe it's, it's, it's this is how it is. 
Katrina doesn't invest in projects, she invests in people and developing people that she believes in. So why is it important for you to identify individuals instead of saying this is the project that interests me? It's more about saying something, some skill, some talent in someone and then developing it, even if it means that the result is not necessarily at the first try the best effort, but it's about supporting and allowing someone to develop a career. Yeah, well I, I mean, I suppose coming from an arts background, um, you know, in the context, for example, in the performing arts, I mean, that's kind of how it's done. There are particular people who clearly have talent and, and you will find them getting to try things out again and again and again and being given a canvas of, you know, many times to experiment. Um, and of course, that's much easier in the performing arts mm -hmm. context. You're dealing with much smaller budgets, you know, um, and, and so you, it, it just allows, I suppose, creative risk um, in, in a way that's, that's much more difficult to find in the world of film. Um, but you know, we are very fortunate. We have we have a fund that is a, that allows you to invest in people and to invest in ideas because it's a curatorial fund. We don't we, you know, we're not an agency. We're not charged with developing an industry. We have an mm -hmm. utterly different kind of series of, of KPIs, if you like, um, which are about about supporting talent, about supporting ideas, about taking risks and hoping that and in the main they do pay off. I mean. Um, and hoping that they're, when they're showcased in our festival, we get to bask in some of that reflected glory. I mean, that's the selfish element of it. We're kind of riding on the back of some fantastic talent and, and you know, getting kudos because we support them. And, and you know, that, frankly, that's what it is. Um, and it, you know, it really helps us to, to support people and to, and to take risks and, and then to see where they go in the world. And you know, if we can keep those relationships going, they want to come back. And that's also very good for the festival. Last night you were called a cultural superhero, and I'm quoting, what are your superpowers? <laughs> well, it was very nice of Michael, but it was definitely an offhand comment. Uh, no, I, I mean, I, I think, you know, we have a gift, which is an amazing amount of money, to support people. I mean, that's, 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 a, that's a big gift. We've got a million bucks every two years to support people. And, you know, when I, when I eventually leave this job, it will be a very hard thing to walk away from. I will never ever have this opportunity again to work to work with this money and to have my board who are so supportive and so up for trying things. You know, I mean, for example, with The Hive, you know, we, we had been doing a very successful laboratory called Crossover for many years with, with Heather Kroll and, and Frank Boyd and the team and, and you know, it's a, it's a wonderful model. But we, we had felt that, you know, it would kind of come to the end for its relationship with us. And, um, you know, to do something like The Hive, which as far as we can tell, and I'm happy to be contradicted in this, but as far as we can tell is a first in the world, uh, you know, the idea of bringing filmmakers together with artists from other art forms and inviting those other artists who are phenomenally talented in what they do to say, come into the world of film. Why don't you think about doing something? Why don't you think about the amazing ideas that you have? Could one of them suit, you know, mm -hmm. the medium of film? Um, and then to say to filmmakers, why don't you spend some time talking to these artists who make their work in a very, very different way, who have a totally different approach different to the creative process, process yes. to creative process, and just spend time with them and see what it sparks. And um, you know, my board got 100% behind it, and I have to say our funding funding partners, you know, SOC, Screen Australia, and ABC, immediately got behind it. Everyone got it, and you know, we were able to able to get, get money together to do it very fast. And you know, again, that that kind of those conversations have just been fantastic. I mean, I don't, I don't know how you felt uh, talking to the people afterwards, but it seemed to me that, that what has what it sparkled is conversation. And I suppose that's what I've always got out of a really good festival, has been the conversations that, you know, you see great work, but it's how you talk about it afterwards and who you meet afterwards and those kind of chance encounters that, that just send you thinking in a totally kind of tangential way and can be incredibly rewarding. And um, so I suppose that's, you know, I suppose that's, that's what's super about our festival and that, in that that is a very, very big priority for us is the conversation. So I suppose it's an opportunity for people to find maybe alternative paths in their career. Glendon Ivan was saying yesterday that now his next project might actually be a transmedia project and that's something that he didn't even think about before the heart. Yeah. So in a way you may have influenced someone's direction. But now that there's a fund that has been announced by uh, the festival and the ABC, 
how is that going to work and who's going to be eligible for it? Is it just going to be high projects? Uh, uh, no, no, it's broader than that. Um, and indeed, I mean, you know, a lot of ideas that have come out of the hive have literally bubbled up during the course of that five days. They, they may be in development for two, three, four, five years. I mean, I, I think we're going to see outcomes for, uh, you know, over a long period in terms of those specific individuals who participated. But what the, what the fund says, um, and in a way it's just formalising a partnership we've had really with the ABC for, for the past few years that we've had the fund, is that we are, you know, the door is open. We are interested in projects that are unconventional in form, that are unconventional in process, that are overtly kind of artistic in their, in their kind of content, and we're interested in experimentation and we want to support that and invest in it. So, so that's that's really what it says. It is open to people who are making that kind of work. Now, are you already working on the 2013 slide, or is it too early? Look, we're not formally working on it um, by any means. We we already have some some ideas. Um, obviously, the visual arts uh, lead time is quite different to film, um, and so we've already had some pretty solid conversations about the commission we might do in terms of installation work, um, which is very exciting. And I've had a number of preliminary discussions with some filmmakers, but you know nothing is solid at all. Um, there are some very exciting things, you know, bubbling away, and, and you know even if only one or two of these ones come off, um, I'm going to be thrilled. Um, and you know, obviously, people have approached me already cold, you know, cold called, um, and I'm going to be starting to look at projects um, sort of late March. I'm taking all of April off. <laughs> Um, but either late March or May really is when, when we're really kicking. Now a number of festivals around the country are doing tours, national tours or state tours. I know that the uh, Adelaide Film Festival has a couple of sessions in, in different places. We do, yeah. But what about any plans for expansion, further expansion across South Australia? Look, we've got a really good relationship with Country Arts SA who run the kind of big venues. Out, out in regional South Australia. So, so this is kind of an experiment this time with them. We, we're doing four screenings um, in regional centres. They're free. Um, and we really just want to see what the take-up is. Um, you know, if the take-up is good, then we will look at expanding that. Um, if we're not getting much take-up, then we're probably unlikely to invest much more time and money in that. Um, but I, you know, it's that tricky thing, you know, to build an audience, you, to build an audience anywhere, you do have to really invest. And so, you know, it's great to have an organisation like Country, Country Arts SA and ETSA also, ETSA Utilities also sponsor us to do that. And, you know, they have a long-term commitment to the regions and to developing audiences there. So, you know, depending on how they respond to this, you know, this year's um, partnership, we'll, we'll look at trying to expand it a bit further. But, you know, I, we'll, we'll probably do it without any other funding. We, we look at just doing the core funding and that partnership. The one thing you've been wanting to do for the Adelaide Film Festival that you've been unable to do because of resources? I, you know, I'm a frustrated arts fest, multi-arts festival programmer, as you can probably tell by what I bring into, bring into this film festival. And I would, and I really think, I mean, if we're celebrating, if we're celebrating the moving image in all its context, what has been missing from our program is the, is the performative context. I'd like to be able to have enough money to do something off scale that has a live performance element with the moving image. I think that that would be the kind of final piece of the puzzle. I'm, I'm absolutely thrilled with our um, visual art program, um, and I think this year it's nailed it. Like it really is a very fine program. Um, uh, I think you know we've really got our digital content down, our online content down. I think that that's very interesting. Lynette Forworth's work that she's created, the augmented reality work for a, for a phone, taps us into a whole new realm of kind of technology and moving image on a handheld set. Um, but I think, and, and we have got live performance with film through our silent cinema program with, with live music or narration going with the screen. But I think there's further you can go and I think there's very interesting work that's being done with moving image interactivity and live performance that I think we could kind of uh, showcase in an interesting way. So, so that's, that's the last bit I would like to